guys, it's Brooke and Jenny once again. We are doing our second wild camp up here in Lancashire. Problem is, we wanted to film our walk to the location, which is somewhat of an hour away. And I don't know if you can tell, but we're in a car and it is very, very rainy. It's not quite torrential rain, it's, it's, it's pretty heavy though. And um, uh, the reason why that's funny is because Jen actually told me not to call it torrential rain because it's not torrential, it's just heavy rain apparently. Um, so we're not going to film the walk to the uh, to the secret location, but we will be donning our rain gear. We've got some waterproofs that we'll be putting on, and uh, and hopefully by the time you magically teleport to the location, it's not going to see two soggy people joining you. <laughs> I'm a bit unsure about that though, Jen. Yep. Okay, well, fingers crossed guys, and we'll see you shortly. It's going to be about an hour for us. It took a little longer than expected. It took us about an hour, an hour and a half to get here. We are dry thanks to our waterproofs, but we are slightly sweaty. As you can see, absolutely idyllic location. <laughs> Ste steaming up a bit there with my glasses. Uh, idyllic location, it's beautiful. We've got some new kit that we're gonna set up in camp. So we'll do some speeded up footage for you to watch and, uh, and then we'll talk you through it afterwards. Right guys, I think that's us about set up. I'll, um, I'll show you a brief look around and then I need to go and get some water. Oh this? Yeah, I'm not Ray Mears. I've just borrowed his hat. About here we have our hammock underneath. There is also a net hammock holding our gear. On the floor is a tarp and then we're setting up other things but it is very difficult to see so I do apologize for that um, I'm just gonna I'm just not gonna show you because um, it's just horrible when you look at a video and you can't see anything and all you can hear is audio that's that's called radio and uh, and yeah we've moved on since then I'll talk you through it in a few moments I'm gonna go get some water first and make sure that we're hydrated Hey guys, I'm just currently collecting water. Look at this, isn't that beautiful? This is where I'm getting the water from. I've currently just filled up my Millbank bag. I'm waiting for it to get down to the, uh, the pre-designated line before I start filling it. And then I'll take us up to where we're camping, which is up there. The lighting situation is a lot better here than it has been up where I actually set up camp. It's just beautiful, absolutely stunning. Right guys, I'm gonna get some water, gonna head back up and see Jen. Oh, and so we can communicate, we've actually got ourselves some, uh, some little two-way radios so that we can actually speak to each other, even though we're some distance apart. These go up to three kilometers, which is pretty cool. Had to cut it short last night with the videos it like we joked in the car that the weather was was just heavy the rain was just heavy but it actually did get torrential didn't it jen yes jen jen camera lady um it did get torrential you'll agree won't you yes good i just need that on record just to say that that things did get torrential and uh, i kind of won an argument there <laughs> uh we got pretty wet in the night well the hammock even though it was covered over did still get some uh, some ingress of water at the edges, which meant that the hammock did get slightly damp. Um, it's let up briefly this morning for a short window, so we've decided to pack up very quickly 
and get on our way so that we can remain at least somewhat dry. Um, and I'm going to review some of the things that I said I would review and the different things that we, we managed to purchase for this wild camp. Here we have the DD camping hammock. It packs down to approximately 26 centimeters by 10 centimeters when it's in its stuff sack and weighs around a kilogram with the webbing. The great feature of this hammock is that it has a double zip layer that can be used to place a thermo rest underneath you as you sleep. Or, like us, we got inside the layers and cocooned ourselves in to lock in some warmth and keep away those nasty flying insects. As the material is breathable, you don't get any nasty condensation dripping on you from your breath. The hammock allowed us to camp in a location that we simply wouldn't have been able to do with a regular tent. Above us was the DD XL tarp, measuring a generous 3 meters by 4.5 meters, and with 19 attachment points made of a strong reinforced material. Those attachment points come in the form of material loops placed at very convenient points along the tarp, allowing for many possible configurations. In fact, due to the positioning of the attachment points, the tarp can be set up and easily turned into an enclosed tent using just a single walking pole or branch, which we really liked as it gives us the option of camping even if suitable trees are not available for us to put up our hammock. The tarp is extremely waterproof, which we were able to put to the test and agree upon due to the continuous and torrential rain that we encountered all night through the camp. The XL tarp weighs in at around one kilogram. Below us is a cheap net hammock that we got from eBay for around six pounds that we set up underneath the DD camping hammock in order to keep all of our bags and equipment off the floor and within easy reach. It packs down to about the same size as the DD hammer. One of the new features of this wild camp came in the form of the nesting two pots, two cups cooking set. This was pretty inexpensive at around 20 pounds and the folding handles made it very compact compared to the previous pan we were using. The cups act as lids, which is the only downside as you can't have a cuppa and cook your meal at the same time. But on the whole, they were fantastic. The narrow profile of the pots meant that the aluminium folding windshield that we used was able to get much closer, maximizing the heat from the burner and giving us a far faster boiling time. The type of stove we're using is the same as from our previous camp. It's a methylated spirit stove with a folding pot stand that raises the burner off of ground level. Possibly one of my favorite pieces of kit that we've had since the start is the Frendo wind-up lantern. It produces over 40 lumens of light when at full setting, which is pretty bright and lights up a considerable area. It has a dimmer setting and a red light setting, which works well if you don't want to be spotted. There's also an SOS Morse code flash setting if you were to get into some kind of trouble. The company claims that one minute of winding will last around 10 minutes of light time. However, We've actually found that it far exceeds this and one minute of winding has lasted up to 20 minutes on full setting when we've used it. It has a metal half ring attachment and also a material attachment point that we're using here attached to the ridge line using a lark's head knot. The fact that this is a wind up lantern means that you never need to worry about running out of light and also don't have to be weighed down carrying spare batteries. This was around the £20 mark also. Following on from that are our wind-up head torches. They're great for all of the same reasons that I've just mentioned about the wind-up lantern. However, these allow you mobility in and away from the campsite, such as using the toilet and other such activities where you might need both hands. You can also see our ground tarp. It's a three meter by three meter camo tarp that was initially going to be used as our cover tarp above our hammock before we decided that a DD tarp was the way to go. It's a tough old tarp and despite having twigs, stones and other pointy things beneath it, it really stood up to the test. It was great to have as it meant that we could kick off our boots and move around on a nice dry floor. I needed a general all purpose knife for use when camping. So I had a look at the knives available to me in my local area and found the Buck, Bucklite Max knife. It has a corrosion resistant blade made of 420 HC stainless steel with a non-slip MPR rubber handle. 
It comes with an excellent heavy duty nylon sheath that felt very secure on my belt and made the knife extremely accessible to me. I've only taken this knife out this camp so don't really want to give it a full review as I've not really used it enough for that. But as a general purpose knife I think it will end up being a constant companion of mine, only time will tell. This is an IKEA wash bag and when opened contains many compartments and also a hook to hang the bag. We have repurposed this wash bag as our kitchen away from home. This contains our tea, coffee, food, seasonings, scissors, extra lighter, extra mess for the stove, our cutlery, some hand sanitizer and a wee dram too. This is a new addition to our wild camping gear and one that we will definitely use again. It's so nice to know where all of your foodstuffs are and it folds down pretty small. It's so easy to set up as well. When you get to camp, you just unzip it and hang the hook on the ridge line. It couldn't be simpler. This is the Kelmer Bushcraft Millbank bag. It's a great addition to the wild camp. In fact, it meant that we had water to drink this time as the soldier ceramic water filter that we'd been using previously seems to have developed some type of problem. The Millbank bag allows us to remove a lot of the large particulates found in the water and then once boiled, the water becomes safe for drinking. The greatest thing about the Millbank bag is that it rolls up extremely small and has very little weight. We're back in the car. On the walk back, we decided that we probably want to share a bit more of our experience because we, we didn't quite get to do that last night because it became dark so quickly. Um, one of the reasons it became dark sooner than we expected is that it took us longer to get to the location than we expected. It's one of the downsides perhaps of using things like Google Earth or just aerial views without using sort of an ordnance survey map where you can see contour lines. When we got to the edge of the woodland that we were going in, there there was a river or brook running through, running through this area and it appeared to be flat from an overhead shot. However, it was quite a steep dip down so there was a precarious walk down um, and not only a precarious walk down, we had to then walk through a sort of boggy, marshy area. Um, we then had to find a spot to cross, um, which was a bit... Scary. A bit scary, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, and then once we'd crossed, we then had to try and get up a very steep embankment on the other side. Um, probably about sort of 20 metres in height up and down, but through foliage that was very difficult to move through. And Nearly lost a shoe. Ne nearly lost a shoe, yeah. In the bog. Uh, in the bog. Um, we also we also found it an interesting night's sleep. As as I've just mentioned in the product review, um, we were using a DD hammock and a DD tarp, and we set it up on the trees that were available. Unfortunately it left enough gap that the rain was able to, to come in at the side of the tarp enough to get the ends of each tar uh, ends of each hammock sorry wet and although the dampness didn't get the sleeping bags wet it did it, it got yours wet oh, okay it, it got one of our sleeping bags wet um to explain why why it got both of them wet uh, or, or one of one of us wet um we were both sleeping in a one person hammock DD's hammocks are very, very uh, spacious once you get inside the the inner compartment, and we were sharing sharing that end for end, which was, was I thought was quite nice. Once you got a comfortable spot, it worked. But if one person turns over, the other person's moving. Um, what were your thoughts on the on the hammock? Not good. Not good. No, I could do it with one person. Yeah. Pat. Uh, not with two people. Too uncomfortable. Too uncomfortable. Jen does like to wriggle around a bit, so. So Jen did find it uncomfortable. Um, about three, three thirty in the morning, I I was awoken to the sound of two sort of gruff male voices, not too far away. So there was a moment where I kind of held my breath um, and just hoped they wouldn't see us. And, and they didn't. The, I didn't hear any voices again. If they did see us, they were probably as scared of us as I was of them. Anything else to add? Um, what other great stuff have we got? 
Um, the boots we've got, we've got, we must give um, a Quechua, which is Decathlon's sort of own brand. Their boots are excellent. We took them to Norway um, four, years, four ago. years ago, and they're still rocking hard. They're about twenty quid or something like that, so they're not expensive. We've taken them on this hike. We've gone through rivers. We've gone through boggy areas. They've been rained on, and quite, quite considerably and they have not leaked they're just they're watertight they're excellent and boots really warm too i think they're that even in norway like down to minus 20 or something yeah i think they're it's their snow boot range um but they're about 20 quid so that's worth it um these guys bandanas excellent stuff um i got these just a, on, a, on, a on a whims <laughs> on, on a whim yeah because I'd, I'd seen someone sort of have have them in their survival kit bags and uh, they've come in really handy, you know, just wiping yourself down if you're a bit sweaty or if you need something to clean, uh, to clean something else or wipe an area or just I hold use, things. I use it as a pocket to carry my water. Yeah, Jen used it as a pocket to carry a water, which was great. Um, my water bottle, not... Just, water. I just took my hat <laughs> off, my Ray Mears style uh, hat, which is excellent. Um, one of the reasons I got that was for the, for the, the rim, as a glasses wearer, it's horrendous walking in the rain because you get all the the water on your spectacles and you just can't see a thing so it stopped most of the rain from hitting my glasses and it that, that was worth its weight in gold it's a water waterproof hat as well which was nice well when i got back to the car took the hat off realized we were going to do this video i thought i can't go on with hair like that it was horrendous so got rid of my hat hair by by giving myself a little a little bandana tussle if you will what other great gear have we got this walk. We got a broken spork. Oh yeah, one of one of our sporks broke. Um, not great. Because my porridge was too thick at the bottom. Yeah. Um, the soldier water broke. Well, I didn't exactly break, but. But it's it become difficult to pump, so we we're, we're we're gonna contact the retailer about that. Um, I can't think of anything else, guys. Um, we're about it's, the, the weather's waterproof become... trousers are awesome. Oh yeah, we got some regatta waterproof trousers, um, over trousers. They've been great. Um, I think that's about it. Make your own trail mix, awesome. Make your own trail mix, trail mix, awesome. Every every time I try to stop this, Jen keeps restarting it. So hopefully <laughs> she'll get the message that when I say it's time to go, because this video is probably getting ridiculously long, she'll shut up. Okay, math shut. <laughs> I'm so gonna get it once this video stops. I'm gonna get punched and everything. Help me! Help me! Uh, guys, it's cleared up. It's it's turning into quite a nice day here. We're in a lovely part of the world, so we're gonna we're gonna ditch our bags. We're gonna just get a day sack. Um, we're gonna go out probably for a five five hour hike or something like that, and then we're gonna hit the pub afterwards. Nice. Thanks for joining us again on a on our second wild camping journey. Remember. We still need your help. Tell us what works, what didn't work, what you liked, what you didn't like, what things we should change. Give us all of your advice. We really would love it. If you just liked the video, say you loved it. Uh, so comment and like, and please remember to subscribe. It means a lot, and it means I don't have to keep bugging you to come and watch my videos. YouTube will do that for me. Okay, guys, take care. See you now. Yeah.